Good morning, Mets fans, and happy Friday. Welcome to Driving with Mr. Met. It is the Friday before Christmas, and just like the Christmas season should be delivering, the Mets got a gift two days ago, and it was an extension for the general manager, Sandy Alderson. I'm not I'm not upset about the extension, honestly, because I'm I'm of the opinion that Sandy hasn't done a bad job. Um and I want to talk a little bit about Sandy on uh, today's show. And I also want to talk a little bit about some news regarding free agents and the types of contracts that they're looking for. And how that might play into the Mets hurry up and wait approach to the offseason. First and foremost, um, Sandy Alderson's extension, the details, at least the last time I looked, were undisclosed. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Again, I don't think Sandy's done a bad job as a general manager of, of the Mets. Uh, I think he's been handed, consistently been handed a really bad hand, been dealt a really bad hand um, as far as the budget goes and what he is able to do as a general manager in a big market. I've been talking about that for the last two weeks or so and how the, the ire of Mets fans should be directed toward the Wilpons and not towards Sandy Alderson. Um, but that's not to say that he's perfect. Um, Mets blog had a ran a really good opinion piece um, yesterday about uh, Sandy's five best and five worst moves as general manager. And if you guys haven't looked at it, I'd encourage you to go check it out because it's really well done. And I think it I think it's actually spot on. Um, but I want to talk about two of the <clears throat> major missteps that Sandy has made as general manager and it, this isn't rocket science if you are a Mets fan and have been since Sandy's been the GM you know that these these two missteps are numbers one and two on the list of really shitty moves made by Sandy Alderson uh, the first one uh, is letting Justin Turner go for a bag of baseballs um, now this is a little bit more defensible only because at the time Nobody thought that Justin Turner would amount to anything. I mean, really, he—he—it's not like it was. It's not like the Mets were the only team that didn't want Justin Turner. Nobody wanted Justin Turner. He signed with the Dodgers on a minor league contract, and he tweaked the swing, and he's become one of the best players in baseball. Not good for Sandy Alderson, all right. But that one, he could sort of get a little bit of a pass on that one. The Daniel Murphy thing, though, which is of course number one. Um, no one deserves a free pass on this. He signed with the Nationals for next to no money after being a cornerstone for the Mets for uh, eight years, six years, seven years, something like that. <clears throat> and after coming off a historic postseason run and one of his best seasons uh, as far as uh, offense is concerned, with Kevin Long as the hitting coach having tweaked Murphy's approach, Everybody knew, everybody knew that Murphy had found something. And Sandy Alderson put a bow on top of that package and said, eh, we don't want him, let someone else have him. So, as we all know, Murph went to the Nats, became an MVP candidate, and the Mets had to sit back and watch as David Wright spent the majority of his time on the disabled list. So, uh, you know, I did want to talk about those two things, because, again, I thought the story that Mets blog wrote was good. Um... And again, I encourage you guys to read it if you haven't. Um, but Sandy's not done a terrible job. And that's, that's the point there. Um, did he did he earn an extension? I don't know. Um, but honestly, I don't care. We really shouldn't care about what's happening in the front office. We should care about what's happening on the field and with the personnel. And that sort of leads me to my second topic for today, which is free agents. Um, again, I was sort of paging through Mets blog and saw a little bit, a little... Um, news about uh, free agent asking prices starting to drop and it's been a result of the collective nature of the business right now whereas if you're not the Yankees you just aren't doing anything uh, I guess it's the Yankees or the Marlins whereas the Yankees are acquiring and the Marlins are selling but um, there's really been, been a lot of inaction um, so far and that inaction has caused a lot of the free agents to reevaluate their asking prices have them sort of say, well, you know, maybe we don't need five years. Maybe we can get away with three. Uh, and I'll use Jay Bruce as the example. Jay Bruce it was originally reported that he wanted five years. 
Um, he wanted to go to the Giants. Uh, it was one of the teams that he was looking at. <clears throat> there was another one, and I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was the Cardinals, but I could be wrong about that. Um, of course, the Mets were on uh, were on Jay Bruce's list of teams he would go to. But the, the bottom line is everyone who was looking at Bruce was sort of capping out at three years. And now Bruce is at a point where he might accept such a deal. And he's not the only free agent in that scenario. Mike Moustakis is another one. And I'm, I'm mentioning these two because they're two guys that are on the radar for the Mets. But this is across the board on the free agent market where none of them are getting signed and all of them are being forced to reevaluate where we are right now. And, you know, I, I wonder how much of what's going on with the free agents is the fact that next year's free agent class is like one of the best ever. It's, it's a historically fantastic free agent class. And maybe that's causing some pause to teams this year to say, I don't want to overspend for my, for the best free agent this year when I can pocket some of that money and use it towards someone next year. And, you know, I, I don't know that that's the case. I'm just speculating. But that could very well be the reason that there hasn't been much movement. You know, there, where a lot of teams are maybe re, rethinking the idea of acquiring some of these. Not to say that Mike Moustakas or Jay Bruce or any of the free agents are, are lesser talents, but they are certainly lesser talents when compared to some of the guys that are available after this season and in 2019 so hey it's Christmas on Monday everybody um, so this will be my last video prior to Christmas uh, I want to thank all of you for uh, for watching this year it's been a lot of fun for me and I intend to continue this um, through 2018 and beyond and vent as often as I can using this as my platform to do so so I thank all of you for watching um, and for commenting and for following me and talking with me on Twitter. I, uh, I appreciate it and I look forward to it and it's a highlight for me. Um, being a Mets fan is, uh, is not easy, but interacting with other Mets fans who we know are in the same boat as we are, it, it does make it a little bit easier. So I thank all of you for that. I wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. If you're not already following me on Twitter, you can do so at Mr. Underscore Met. Again, Merry Christmas, and as always, let's go Mets.